Yes, guys, welcome back to another week of the weekly roundup. It's week 22, but this week's a little bit different because our good friend Will is not in England anymore. He's in Bali, um, so hence a different background. Yeah. Might be a bit of like technical issues and just ignore the background noise. Just some yeah. people building a villa behind Will apparently. Yeah. Um, <laughs> can you hear? I don't know if you can hear like the geckos or whatever. The crickets, they're there. Like, Wait. Are they there? Yeah. Are they active? Like, I can't hear it, unfortunately. <laughs> I was just going to try and make the noise, but I think I can't. Wink, 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 wink. Something like that. But no, obviously this show must go on. So yeah, we've, uh, we're obviously continuing the weekly roundup, going through the news, all that kind of good stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, fairly quiet week, to be fair, this week. And we'll jump into some uh, some charts and we'll even chat about Bali at the end, just for you guys who are interested. Mad. Um, cool, but probably the biggest story to break this week, which we'll kick it off with, is Binance stop supporting USDC, which is obviously the second largest stable coin. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a couple more pairings which have started with USDP and uh, TUSD pair, pairs. So they've done this to what they say to what improve liquidity of Binance's stable coin and to mm-hmm. just kind of push that opposed to using other people's stable coins. Um, I don't know what why they've done it in terms of like why it'll actually benefit Binance particularly. Like, I'm mean, not too sure what the, what the move is behind it, do you know? I think it's like quite a good like marketing scheme because it obviously puts a lot of like spotlight on BUSD specifically. Like a lot of people yeah. don't even know about BUSD, even if they trade on Binance. So I think that it's it's a, not a bad move from CZ. It's a bit odd though, like, and it seems like a bit of an effort to be like creating some sort of liquidity pool for all the stable coins, um, apart from Tether, obviously. And it's a bit weird that Tether's not been mentioned as well. Something that I really don't really understand about it at all. Right. Um, I saw a thread from Jeremy Allaire, who's the CEO of Circle, and he was saying that. Tether's not on there because it would really mess up their liquidity, that Tether's the biggest trading pair on Binance. Um, Circle's obviously being um, the second the second biggest pair on there. But I don't really get why they would still do that to Circle and then just leave Tether on its own. So, I, I don't know. It leaves me more towards the speculation that something that's not yeah. right with Tether. Tether, yeah. No, that's one of the first things that kind of came to my head as well. But, yeah, obviously it says here that... Um, Users won't be affected. Like it's going to be trading in a one-to-one ratio, mm-hmm. so you can still deposit USDC from what you said off camera. Mm-hmm. But obviously, when when you trade on onto Binance, it will just kind of um, convert it basically to be USD, their their own stable coin. So it's not 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 nothing major. It kind of came out of nowhere. I think this did. Like, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, I think I've got another article here which is talking about that circles uh, CEO, like you just said there. And he actually thinks that it's actually going to benefit um, a circle, like be a USDC. Mm. Literally, just like you see here, he, he's on the side that he doesn't know why I've done it, and he's come and said that, come out and said that um, he thinks it's going to benefit USDC. So it's a bit yeah. of a weird one, and I guess it talks about USDC here on, on this. So if you guys want to check it out, it kind of I talks think... about Tether and why. What about Tether? Yeah, Alain said he's basically in it for the long game, um, but it's going to it's going to benefit USDC, but I don't really think it will. I think he's just got to say that. Like, I feel like Binance have just done this. Um, you can still deposit and withdraw, like you were saying, in USDC or any of the other stable mm. coins. It just auto-converts them to BUSD to be traded on the platform, and you can draw them out. As far as the article says, um, obviously, we haven't, I've not used it yet, um, you can still draw them out in, in the native asset, so you can still draw it out as USDC. But like, what else is he going to say, I guess, if, if Binance just sprung this on him, he's not going to be like, oh, yeah, it's really bad for us. He's, he's got to be like, oh, yeah, yeah, like I can see the positives in it and it's going to bring more liquidity to to Binance's website and people um, are still going to be using USDC but not know about it, basically. Yeah. It's a bit of, it's a, bit of a weird one, isn't it? Mm. But we'll see what comes out of it. It makes me think that there's some sort of, some sort of ulterior motive to it, but it could easily not be as well. But uh, I, think it's just a mar- I think it's just a marketing scheme oh. from CZ towards... Thing. Like, yeah, pushing BUSD out there more. Yeah. But at the same time, one was kind of like putting a, I was going to say something else, but uh, also just putting a bit of a bad kind of aspect on USDC at the same time because it's just trying to take over that. You think mm-hmm. they're trying to go for that second spot in terms of stablecoin? Or yeah, they could be, to be fair. I don't really... That's literally what, probably what they're doing. Yeah, I don't know why Tether's not been included, though. It, like, it makes sense. If they were going to do that, they should just 
they may as well just include Tether as well, and then they could just have the whole of Binance as trading against BUSD. But I don't know. Like they haven't even mentioned Tether in the article. It's only a no, that mentions like Tether. Yeah, exactly, because he's obviously going to speculate on the, on the other, other outside. Mm. I'm going to speak about USDT, but God knows what's going on there, but we thought we'd bring it to your attention. Another thing we're going to speak about is Bank of Russia to green like cross-border payments with crypto. Mm. So, it's again, we've kind of seen Russia kind of teasing this anyway, because obviously, like, like it says in this article, both Ukraine and Russia have kind of been using crypto as a means to get around certain ways of transferring uh, money basically and they've been using crypto and um, which is again highlighted here in this article but I just kind of wanted to link it with uh, what we were speaking about last week with, with Iran as well mm. and just the general like BRIC nations and because I've seen a couple of other articles floating about how the BRIC nations are all going to kind of do their imports and exports on via crypto like all of them obviously Iran aren't like a BRIC nation but they're pretty much in that kind of that mm. circle opposed to like Europe or America or whatever yeah so a bit, bit more speculation there because do you think that we could see like Russia, China, India, I know the other like countries around doing a lot of their trading in, in crypto and this kind of supports that as well actually, doesn't it? Yeah, I think it's possible. Um, I don't know how long it would take to implement. I don't know how bad the issues are, but I know that they've obviously all got like debt in, the, in dollars and stuff. So I don't know. I don't know how that would work in terms of their economy shifting towards that, but I think it's definitely a possibility, and they have been talking about it, they've been talking about settling stable coins, obviously, like you were saying, we've seen Iran accepting crypto for cross-border payment, um, and yeah. I think that even with what's being speculated here, I think that we'll probably see some nations at least accept it as like dollar or this, but I don't know what that does to the dollar, yeah. and, I, and I don't know how America react to that, but yeah, I think it's defo possible, and it's pretty exciting to see like something like that coming forward. Yeah, it is exciting. I think, I, personally, I see it as a bit more of like a FU to the dollar. Yeah. In terms of like, you know, Russia, China, and all them saying, look, if you want to do your thing, we'll do our thing for you, and we'll use crypto. Uh, so, obviously, as a crypto investor, it's, it's good to see that, but at the same time, it's Russia, so we don't like to see Russia do anything good nowadays, but um, <laughs> it's good to see that they're doing something, they're still pro crypto. They've yeah. kind of like pivoted in their stance, actually, haven't they? Mm. Post, like, post, like pre-war to like post-war just like during war now they've become more crypto friendly to kind of get around sanctions so don't know don't know how to feel about that but one good thing is obviously seeing this cross-border things um accepted and iran at the same time like people like iran countries like iran saying that they're going to do a lot of their trade um mm. in crypto so it kind of like leads to that doesn't it yeah but obviously it just, brings more volume nothing major again mm. yeah brings more volume to, to crypto in general but I'm kind of steering down the path that you might see a lot more other people doing. I think even like European countries kind of start doing that in the future, which is what we've been saying anyway, week in, week out. Mm-hmm. But another big news is the UK's got a new Prime Minister, Liz Truss. Yeah. Liz Truss. So it's obviously out of her and Rishi Sunak causing it. Both fairly pro crypto. Obviously, I've got the next tab open here, which is what uh, Will tweeted. It's, I've said this about uh, crypto in 2018. Mm-hmm. Yes, it was a few years ago. But nonetheless, she still said that about crypto. So it's not like she's like a Gary Gensler kind of figure, right? Really opposed to it, trying to like, you know, sue everyone left, right and centre. She's actually quite open to it. So is Richie Sue now. So it was a bit bit of like a win-win regardless for us. But it's yeah. big news nonetheless. Obviously, whatever decision she makes, it's going to obviously affect all of us. And like the UK, Europe, everyone. Yeah, definitely. What do you think? What's your opinion on this trust? I think it shows two things. Is one that she obviously even recognises crypto, so that's a cool thing to start with, and two that she's obviously mm-hmm. bullish towards it. Like even if she tweeted and it was negative, yeah, okay, she recognises it, and like actively recognises it. But recognising it and being positive about it is pretty decent, like for a new prime minister. Yeah. And like obviously she's recognised by the WEF as well, World Economic Forum, where yeah, our boy, our boy Brad, in, our boy Brad's in there as well. Um, that's Brad Garner's yeah. house for anyone who doesn't know. Um, and yeah, I think that I don't want to go too speculative, but like like we've talked about off cameras, I really do think we're pointing towards a digital pound coming soon. And I personally believe that Ripple are going to be involved in some way, especially with Digital Pound Foundation and their testing back to 2016 with the Bank of England. So I that's what my eyes are on at the minute. And Swell is now in London mm. in November. All of these things are pointing towards that for me, and I know it's a big speculation because that is a massive deal. 
so it's it's a hard thing to call and and call right but i think that there's def like it that's where things are pointing for me right now good good a lot of things going on in the uk specifically like like you said swell and all that kind of stuff and you've got a new prime minister which is it's good news rather than bad news isn't it regardless even though it was two few years ago but talking yeah, about definitely. digital pound foundation they put this tweet out a few days ago i think it was and uh, saying india central bank the reserve bank of india has reportedly asked four public sector banks to run a uh, pilot central bank digital currency project ahead of a possible rollout in this financial year which is it's crazy and i've kind of i'll link it to the tab next we'll go into that in a second mm. um but yeah so that's four public sector banks to run a pilot for the cbdc and they're saying that they could be releasing it india could have a cbdc at the end of this year right well if i read that wrong no that's right bro it's just so crazy it's so it's crazy mad, and like oh god by the way, guys, if you're watching this now and you haven't already checked out the um, deep dive into Ripple and India that I made like two, three months ago on my channel, go and check that out because I think there's a lot there. Again, what what do we keep tweeting, Pav? Watch out for India, Brazil and the UK yeah. um, and India obviously there. And we've just talked about the UK, like com- coincidentally, like we haven't actually planned that like that. But they're the three countries we keep yeah. saying to watch, Brazil, UK and India. And because of their strong connections with Ripple, but I think they're, they're going to be the ones to watch in terms of innovation as well. Like, And they're saying they can get a CBDC out potentially by the end of the year. And like, I believe it. Like, if any country is going to do it, Crazy. like, in, India are going to do it. Obviously, China are already out with their digital yuan. India are kind of trying to compete with China in that, like, race to be the, the next power in the world, in my opinion. Like, we are very bullish about yeah. India as a demographic. Like, the average age of... And, um, Indians are 28 years old with their average net savers. We're bullish about them in general. Um, so they want to be ahead with tech. The data is cheap. So it makes sense. It makes sense to be rolling out um, something innovative and forward looking uh, to do with their economy. And we know from Ripple that like they've got good connections in India. They, we know that with Bhutan, um, the yep. Bhutan currency is in the Gultram, which is tied one to one with the Indian rupee. They import and export, like, I think we said, like, 70 to 80% of their stuff from India. It's like, all these things are already being built out there. They're ready um, for some sort of something to happen. And, yeah, CBDC is coming. It, we just don't know where it's being built. But it's going to have to be built somewhere, guys. And that's what people don't really get about, like, CBDC. They're like, oh, yeah, it's going to be their own crypto. Yes, it is. But it's got to be built on some sort of blockchain rail. And it's got to be built on one that's already been tested and that isn't going to fail. So building their own is not as easy as it said, as they say because there's been no testing on it. They like they won't they won't have had like any like previous history to look through that oh, okay, could this have gone wrong? What happened here? How many transactions have failed? How many have been successful? Blah blah blah. So it's a big deal for any country to be like, Oh yeah, we're gonna switch our whole currency over to something digital without any testing. So in my opinion, most cryptos especially C B D C are gonna be built on some existing rail. Um and we presume Ripple's uh, or XR, the XRP ledger with Ripple's assistance um, is where I think that these CBDCs will be built anyway. Mm. Yeah, I mean, regardless where they are, but like I said, it has to be built somewhere. But I have to echo the fact that I think India are definitely going to be a front runner, not just in crypto, but I just think in the world in general, like the next financial powerhouse, in my mm. opinion. Like a lot of other people share that, share that as well, which is why our eyes are literally on India all the time. And I'm just going to link um, this article that came out because uh, our good friend Anthony Welfare follows us on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Um, hopefully, going to get him on a podcast soon as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, basically, mentioned that Ripple have some potential CBDC announcements coming out in the near future. That's all they said. I'm not said anything specific. But the reason I kind of put these two tabs together is not necessarily to speculate. You know, India's CBDC is going to be run on the XRPL or anything like that, which it might do, but things a bit bit early slash naive to say at the moment but mm-hmm. um just to reiterate the fact that look this is actually coming a lot quicker than people think so if you've got india hopefully releasing one at the end of this year and you've got ripple saying that they've got big announcements coming in regard to cbd's um in a new future near future yeah it's mad we're gonna I see think... everything we're gonna see everything happen a lot quicker even than when we thought like 
I actually remember me and you having conversations like early this year, so that's last year. When do you think CBDCs are going to be a thing? Mm-hmm. We said, oh, probably like another three, three years, something like that. I think we said, yeah. obviously not knowing too much into it, but then everything that's kind of unfolded this year, with like you know the geopolitical situation, everything mm-hmm. like the financial cracks that are even like being yeah. exposed ever more, it's kind of really is acting as a catalyst to like speed up the process of these CBDCs coming out. Yeah, for and sure. It's exciting someone to be a part of the space it's exciting to see it needs it i feel like the world definitely needs it the financial system definitely needs it at the moment yeah i agree but, I, I don't know it's, cool. like, it's cool to see like everything that you like speculated about start to come into fruition and then we've obviously yeah. um with that announcement coming from anthony welfare who's like i think he's head of like cbdc's in in europe area um and obviously in contact with us, he followed us on Twitter a few weeks ago, didn't even realise, to be honest. I follow, I've, followed, I've followed a lot of his presentations for a while, didn't even know he had Twitter. He's only got a small Twitter account, at like four or 5,000, and we've been in contact about getting him on the podcast. Um, he could be coming on in the next, like, two weeks. He's just on holiday at the minute, so once he's finished his holiday, we'll get him on and fire some questions away. So if you're watching this and you want to ask him something specifically, let us know in the comments. Um, but that would be such an interesting conversation. He's already said that he can't talk about like the price of any assets or anything like that, but he hasn't said what he can and can't say about potential partnerships. I'm going to say, like, oh, is, it, is the UK digital pound being built on the XRP ledger? You don't have to say yes or no, but blink twice if it's yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess he's got to be really careful what he says because obviously he's got such a like, pivotal role within report. Mm. Got to tread carefully in terms of how he words things because he can't let anything slip. He can't let anything slip on the podcast, can it? Oh boy! Knows, we'll, we'll grab onto it. We'll, yeah, if we'll anyone's going to grab up. onto it, it's going to be me and you grabbing onto it. Hundred <laughs> percent. We'll be clipping it up. We'll be blowing that up. I'll be like, so uh, is it not being built on the XRP ledger? Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> just upload the questions within questions, confusing. Yeah. It was just a one. Yeah, and that's it. That's about our week, isn't it? We've got a bit of charts. Yeah, that's the news. Week. That's the news done really. Obviously, we have to dive into charts as well. Like I said, it's been, it actually has been a bit quiet. I feel like price, price action news, ripple case has been nothing really has been happening in the, over the past like few weeks. Like, obviously, I'm sure everyone's been looking at the charts as well. Nothing. It's not said, telling me anything new at the moment. Yes, we had a bit of a drop a few days ago on uh, on the sixth of September, but nothing really bad. Like nothing's really market structure's not really been broke in my opinion like we've not really set any like low, we've not broke these lows yet that a lot of people are kind of like shouting towards um obviously i'm gonna dive into this week in the newsletter just as a bit of a sneak peek for you guys i'm just going to be speaking about well one section i'm yet to write the second section one thing i'm going to be covering again is ethereum mm-hmm. oh can't give away too much here because it's got all my drawings on it and kind of linking it towards this chart here, like the market cap Bitcoin dominance, because it's hitting this slight section here. Yeah. A lot of other content creators have been speaking about it as well. So I thought I'd just quickly cover it and relate it to um, ETH and other altcoins as well. But nothing really jumping out this week. Same old indicators. Everything's looking the same, even on the weekly candles, monthly candles. Everything's still looking to, to where we think it's going to go anyway, which is all we speak about every week in our newsletters. Yeah, oil. The, then actually, one big thing actually is oil because oil has kind of broken out of this wedge, which we've had. We've been banging on about oil for the past few months, obviously, with it having big ties of like the inflation narrative, etc. It's kind of fallen below this bit of um, support that has really been latching onto over the past like, couple of months, basically, and it yeah. fell down and it actually hit the top of our price target, just about. I think it might have been slightly shy actually, but we've, we've spoke about this on Twitter. Obviously, gone into deep diving it on. Um, on the, the newsletter as well so that's pretty much hit where we thought it would go now yeah and uh i'm actually uh, covering this week in the newsletter just to touch on it yeah to be fair where did you start calling that or we started calling that all the way around here somewhere like in this kind of area i no. feel like no we called it higher called... i think like 110 i thought it was like 112 we were at oh when, well, we, when we first spoke about it yeah, yeah. yeah the week one's of the newsletter i think it was like where was it over it it was definitely yeah. the hundred yeah um it could, it could have potentially been around this this kind of time because yeah. that was actually the first time. I'm trying to remember when the first time we wrote that first news. I think it was early July, so it must have been around here. And that's when I literally, we literally said $86, uh, mm. I think we said, that mm. kind of price area, like the progression. When it's gone, it's got there. Whether it yeah. goes down even further and actually like really does test like the, these highs here, is obviously yet to be seen. I think 
we've got a lot of sideways action coming with oil now because I feel no matter, no matter what happens with price action, like we said um, on previous week's episode, we've still got the supply issues going on with, with Russia and all these kind of like European countries. So, yeah, I think it's still got that's out, actually, outer perspectives happening. Yeah, for but, sure. It's obviously massively focused on like natural gas at the minute. Um, yeah. So whether it brings inflation down, I don't know. But oil's normally a big like weight in the basket for CPI because it's needed for quite a lot of stuff. Um, so it, but it again pushes towards what we've been talking about every week in the newsletter towards the potential mm-hmm. pivot from the Fed because their main like interest is to have their eyes on what inflation is doing. And if in, if that is something that's going to be more deflationary if the if oil comes down, then they have the scope to change the monetary policy if they need to or they want to. Yeah, that's what I mean. That's why it's such a big thing. That's why I literally every day I'm looking at it. Another thing I'm looking at every day is DXY. Again, caught a bit of news this week actually, so it's only about touching it because it's set like multi year highs again. Touched that one ten, shied the one eleven which price targets we put in a newsletter mm-hmm. because I think when I was speaking about the newsletter we were around here. And I was just kind of like indicating the fact that look, there's a bearish divergence going on in with the RSI and the price action. Mm-hmm. I said, look, we'll probably come up and touch this resistance, which it's kind of like, which it has dropped below the SMA. So could this be a potential top? Who knows? A lot of people are shouting for uh, more, a couple more months yeah. of the DXY kind of going up even higher. I think on Twitter, I tweeted, we'll probably come back down to the 50 MA at some point. Obviously, that's going to continue to go higher. So I think DXY now, but at least September is going to go sideways. I don't think it's going to just go parabolic up into it. After that, after it bounces off the 50 MA, it could potentially have another leg up to touch these price, price, uh, prices up here. But who knows? It's just something you've got to keep an eye on with the DXY because it's just kind of absolutely blown out. If you just look at the price chart, you don't have to really be a genius to see what's been going on with this. It's just been absolutely skyrocketing up. So just keep an eye on that, to be fair. Like... That's what yeah, we can do the with the markets in general at the moment. The indicators look like it looks like it needs to have a little bit of a cool off at least like on the daily but This is what I mean. Yeah. Who, who this knows? kind of kinda of lends itself to like a good a good month for, for crypto slash risk on assets as well. Even if it's just like a temporary temporary one in September before more sideways to, to lower action, who knows? But Yeah, for sure. For kind sure. of lends itself to a positive uh, positive September, which would break the uh, six year cut, five or six year curse of September. Because yeah. they've all been red for the past five, six year, six years. I think we spoke about it last week. Last week, sorry. But yeah, I think that's about it, really. I've got not, not really got too much to report on. No, I think that's. This obviously, you know, North North will because Will's been battling jet lag. Obviously, it took him like Still struggling. thirty odd hours to get to Bali in the first place, but. Uh, but no, let's talk about let's talk about Bali. Okay, well, we, what are we gonna say? Yeah, so I'm I'm still struggling a bit to be fair. What's like, it like? What's it like? What um, is, what's Bali about? Obviously, everyone everyone knows likes to like you know go on holiday to Bali, etc. What's it like to like meet people there? What are the people like? Have you met any crypto people out there or? Yeah, so I've met quite a lot of crypto people actually. Um, just randomly walked up to some people, spoke to them, and then they pointed me towards like a crypto group after a long conversation. Um, went up to a crypto meetup. I'm going to go to another one at some point. I think there was one today, but I didn't go to that. There's one like every day. It's literally like, apparently like the crypto hub um, of anywhere that's not Dubai, apparently, and Singapore. So there's a lot of like developers and stuff here. I spoke to some dev- devs yesterday. We've got some really cool ideas. Like I'm speaking to someone from a, a big crypto project and also somebody from like a smaller like game sort of project. Both really exciting, like in terms of they just excite me in general. And then in terms of barley itself, yeah, it's good. I'm tired, though. I'm tired. I'm still struggling with sleep. Um, mm. I don't really know what's going on in terms of, like, food and stuff. I just order food every day. Um, but, yeah, I haven't got a moped yet, and you kind of need one to get around, and I'm just crapping myself a little bit about getting one. Um, so I've been getting, like, they're called, like, Gojacks or Grabs, and it's just, like, when you get on the back of someone else's moped, basically. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's yeah, basically what I've been doing just like chilling in the pool yeah Sorry. I was going to say look you can probably pan, to, pan over to the pool now I can't see your screw, your, your camera now, but you're up. sitting literally there it is I'm guessing, I'm guessing you're showing them now yeah, yeah. there it is <laughs> it's the new crew the new <laughs> new HQ for crypto insight for the time being anyway yeah for the next um, 30 days but that's another thing is the visas are a bit like they're not hard but they're just 
I get 30 days visa on arrival, yeah, and I can extend that for yeah. another 30. Um, but then if I want to stay longer, I need to go. And, I need to get a business visa. But to get a business visa, you have to leave the country and come back. So that's so well, annoying. Visas are always tricky, aren't they? I know. Like, like, why? No matter what country you go to, it's yeah. just ridiculous. I don't know. Why does that need to be a law? Can't I just go and sign a piece of paper and say, look, I'm going to stay for another 30 days? So it'll be a little bit digital soon, so I guess it'll move a lot quicker. So it's another thing. Can visas be in the blockchain? Surely they can. They could be taken yeah. or something like that. Surely yeah, they sure they will happen. be at some point. It makes sense. That's a good idea. Any uh, people looking for new business ideas, that's a great one for yeah, you. There you go. There's a million dollar idea for you. Right there. there you go. In fact, I might do that. <laughs> Tokenized visas. Tokenized visas. Make them NFTs on the XRP ledger when XLF20 comes out next week. There you go. I guess that's some other new. I guess we spoke about it last week as well. So yeah. there's nothing new really to speak about. I guess uh, there's. I think part one of the ETH merger actually got, went through, didn't it? A few, a few uh, days ago. Part two is obviously, which is when the merger actually happened. Still expected to be there for the 15th, yeah. somewhere around then anyway. So I'm sure we'll be speaking about that next week because it will literally be there. So what, what's the date going to be next? Uh, yeah. So we'll potentially might have already happened next time we speak to you guys. But yeah, that's mad. And hopefully we'll have more news to speak about. And that is crazy because a lot could happen in terms of price action, not just yeah. for ETH, but for other no, altcoins, no. Bitcoin. I've kind of got a little speculation going on. I don't, I'm not going to say it because obviously that's for our newsletter subscribers only. I might speak about it next week. Mm-hmm. But I've got to give it to the newsletter subscribers first, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's about yeah. it, I think. Yeah, I think I next really week. I don't really know what else to speak about, guys. We're teeing up for a big week next week with XLS20 with uh, the ETH merge and also with potential launch of Flare Networks and the distribution of their token, so it's a big week. There is a lot coming. I just feel like the past couple of weeks, it's just, like I said, the price, everything else has been literally flat, slash simmering, waiting for something to happen. And then when this next move happens, it kind of indicates that it's going to be quite a big one. Because mm-hmm. even the price, it's just like, look at it. Over the past like week or so, it's just literally been straight. When do you see that in crypto? You never yeah, really never. see that, do you? Yeah. Never really, no. Obviously, you saw it there before we dropped a bit, but it just kind of indicates that there's another move coming. Mm-hmm. Let's see. I hope right. it's the upside. And that's it for week 22. Week 22, a bit of a short and sweet one this week. Obviously, got to give Will a bit of time to kind of get accustomed to his new surroundings, but week 23, we'll be back with you, hopefully with some more news. Back with the bank. the merger and anything else. Back with yeah. the bank. Peace up, A-Town Downers, I should say. Peace up. Yeah. <laughs>